Gracious Lord, we love you. We are so thankful that you love us. Um, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I am thankful, Lord, you didn't call us to come up to you uh, as a way of salvation. We would have never been able to, to get there. But you stooped to us. You condescended. And um, you didn't just come to us. You lived the life we should have lived. And then you died as a substitute in our place. You took our place. And um, because of that, we, we can be declared not condemned. And uh, that's available to us by faith alone. We are so thankful for that. Would you bless these that will give testimony of this work of grace in their lives tonight in baptism? And may you encourage us as we, we listen and watch in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Come on down. Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Searle. I'm originally from Florida. However, I've been in Lynchburg for the past two years studying engineering at Liberty University. My freshman year, I was unsuccessful in finding a church, but by God's grace, I was recommended Timberlake by faithful believers from Florida. I've been attending Timberlake since last fall. Um, tonight, I would like to take some time to share my testimony of how the Lord has brought me to himself. As a child, I was raised in a Christian family. I attended church every Sunday. Um, even though God blessed me with this, I had no desire to seek God's word or repent of my sins. In my mind, my life was outwardly more moral than other children around me. Uh, because of this, I thought I was a believer. I believed that because I behaved better than those around me, I was right with God. However, inwardly, I was unregenerate and an enemy of God. I loved my sins and I was self-righteous. My pride was blinding me from seeing the true state before God. However, by God's grace, he sent a faithful believer to confront my pride and sin. About four years ago, my cousin Sebastian spoke to me about Reformed theology. Specifically, my cousin explained the doctrine of election to me. The doctrine confronted my self-centered worldview. I thought my cousin was wrong, and I decided to research into theology to prove him wrong. However, my cousin pointed me to faithful pastors like Paul Washer, John MacArthur, Alshie Sproul, and others. I listened to sermon after sermon about God's holiness and my depravity. Additionally, the more I heard about what marks a true believer, the more convicted I got. God used these sermons to humble me before him. I remember praying in tears night after night for God to destroy my pride and humble me. I was broken over my sin. And only by God's grace did I put faith in Jesus' perfect atonement on the cross. I believe that Jesus took my sin on himself and gave me his righteousness through faith in him. He endured the wrath and death I deserved, then rose from the grave and defeated death. Now I partake in a resurrection like his. Christ heard my prayers and brought me from death to life. Ever since then, the Spirit has given me desire to know what God has commanded. I began to recognize my sin for what it was and repent of it. When I found the most excellent prize, the worldly pursuits I was striving towards began to look fruitless, and I did not bring satisfaction. God drew my eyes towards his awesome majesty. Because of this, I want to obey God in the scriptures and be baptized post-conversion. Specifically, I want to be baptized into a local congregation for the mutual growth that God lays out in his word. The more I learn about Timberlake, the more I've found it to be a church that's marked by its submission to God's word. This has been such a blessing for me to grow my faith. So I declare my salvation and, participate, and to participate as a believer in this local church, I'm being baptized today. To God be the glory. Jeffrey, based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life.
Thank you. Good evening. My name is Greg Reed. I grew up in Minnesota, the oldest of four. When I was very young, my mom and I were reading a book together. This book talked about Jesus and why he is celebrated at Christmas. The conversation between me and my mom led me to ask how Jesus can live in my heart. With her help and guidance, I prayed and asked Jesus to do just that. Growing up, I was around godly influence nearly all the time. Christian, Christian school, church, and believers on both sides of my family built the foundation of understanding about Christianity and the Bible. However, I was living by two different standards. My understanding and belief about salvation and God was very legalistic and treated God like a vending machine. After graduating from high school, I left home in search of what the world had to offer. I took an opportunity to work in Forest, Virginia. What a thrill. 1,200 miles from home, living on my own. This is awesome. But with this new independence, I began to intentionally ignore God and his word. My Bible went to church with me and then sat on my nightstand for the rest of the week closed till the following Sunday. I, went to ch I prayed before meals and when others would occasionally pray with me, but not in my own. I had, I had very little desire for God or his truth and will. I was living with pride in my heart, believing that I was capable of righteousness and living a good life. If only I would just try harder not to fall into sin. But fallen in my flesh, I was becoming more and more a slave to sin. I was lost and confused. And then, by God's grace, I was invited by my cousin to visit Timberlake Baptist Church in February of 2023. I got plugged into Boundless and met more sincere followers of Christ than it seemed like I have known my whole life. I continued attending and sought membership at Timberlake Baptist Church, but when sharing my testimony at my membership interview, I realized I'd forgotten and lost my understanding of the gospel. I did not have any evidence of a life transformed by Christ. I wrestled and fought this reality in my heart, denying in my mind that I needed to give the rest of what I thought was everything to God. The world I had built on my self-righteousness was falling apart. The person I thought I was was counterfeit. In anger, I prayed to God, show me what I've done. And my heart was filled with guilt for the lifestyle God revealed I'd been living. Bitterness and jealousy had grown in my heart. When my mind and soul weighed heavy with burden, I sinned and sought my own pleasure instead of God's heart. In various ways, I deceived my employer and justified it in my heart for the struggles I was facing. Alone at home, I, was, I gave in and sought after sins of lust and fleshly desire. I avoided the Bible to keep my conscience calm. And praying? Maybe when I needed the Lord to bring something good my way, I'd pray, but seldom did I seek God's will. Then January 24th of this year was the day of decisions. Desperate for wisdom, I began the day and opened to Matthew 18. This passage tells the truth of how the disciples argued pridefully among themselves and asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus brings before them a child and says to them, whoever is humble and receives me like a child will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Not who had the greatest stories or the greatest victories, the greatest righteousness or wisdom, but he who hears and believes in humility. I was broken in spirit and in my heart. I saw my need for Christ. So unlike my previous prayer, I prayed, God, I am in no way possible able to live apart from you. I have wandered from the truth which I, which I believed to learn, which I was blessed to learn of, which I was blessed to learn of in my past. I deserve the punishment owed for the sins I've committed, but I believe that Jesus' sacrifice offers me a second chance. Lord, I need you. I need your word to guide me to wisdom and your spirit to con convict me of wrong. I surrender my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul to do what you will to any capacity you deem worthy of your servant. But change me, Lord, and make me a man that is most satisfied in you. And I believe that it was here that God truly redeemed me from my wandering and met me on the road as the father met the prodigal. Following that prayer, I wrote down a list of all the wrongs I could remember to bring before my employer and make things right for the ways I deceived him. I was shocked at his response. He said to me, Greg, before we begin, I want you to know that the king has declared that you are important and he deeply cares about you and loves you. Whatever anyone says, don't forget that. I took my list and set it before him and told him I need to confess and ask for forgiveness because I've broken your trust. He moved it back to me without a glance and said, I don't need to see it, Greg. 
Whatever it is, it's forgiven. Let's move on. My sin was flipped on its head with this illustration of God's glory displayed in forgiveness. God used my employer to remind me of what he does for sinners who repent and have faith in his son. I'm so grateful for God's patience and work in my life. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Later that day, I felt the change of the Holy Spirit transform my heart. My desires for sin and my appetites for the things of this world were replaced with a desire for God and his word. I want to be baptized today as a display of the change and work of grace in my life. I want to join Timberlake Baptist Church to continue to faithfully grow and to better learn and serve for God's glory. Greg, based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. Good evening. My name is John Johnston. I grew up in a godly household, and for as long as I can remember, my parents emphasized to me the importance of attending church and reading the Bible. While this was a great blessing, it did not change the fact that I was a sinner and in need of salvation. I had been exposed to the gospel numerous times, but one night, when I was five years old, after we'd finished our family devotion, I told my parents that I was ready to trust Jesus to forgive my sins. My parents asked me questions to make sure that I understood what that meant and why I needed to be saved, and then walked me through how to pray and ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Over the years since that time, I've understood more and more how sinful I really was and that the only way to salvation was through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for the sins of the world. I'm thankful for the privilege of being baptized tonight as an outward symbol of my conversion and my faith in Jesus Christ and to become a member of this church. John, based on your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of the death, raised to walk in new life. Hi, my name is Nathan Skinner. Uh, God has blessed me greatly and done so much for me in my life. Uh, I was very blessed to be born to two strong Christians who raised me faithfully. Uh, for as long as I can remember, my family has always read the Bible together at night. It's been very helpful for my spiritual development. Uh, when I was very young, my dad explained the gospel to me, and I think, and, and I, was, I was pretty young when I uh, accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord. I don't remember the exact date, but I do remember my dad explained uh, the gospel to me and accepted Christ. Um, I know I was a sinner condemned to hell, both for my deeds and my natural rebellion against God, uh, inherited from Adam. I believe Jesus paid the price for my sin by dying on the cross, and that he rose from the dead on the third day, uh, giving us confidence that one day we too will rise. I believe that Christ is my Lord and Savior, and have committed to living for him, and committed to not walking in sin, and I believe that I will live forever with him. Uh, I believe we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and convicted of sin, Help us walk in righteousness, reveals the word to us, and seals us for Christ's return. Um, one major thing that has shaped my life, um, that God has helped me with, is uh, my dad was in the military, moved around a lot. Um, There's some other reasons I've struggled with things like uh, keeping friends, stuff like that, but I've had, uh, as we've moved around, um, but God has helped me along the way, and uh, I've learned to rely on Him as. Um, best friend of my father who's always there for me and he's used it to teach me to rely on him more. Uh, throughout my life I have um, struggled with various sins um, and God has convicted me of them and helped me through them and to overcome that. Um, giving me confidence in him and helping me relate to others um, to learn how to draw closer to him and showing me my complete reliance on him. I have never been baptized um, primarily because no, I just never um, fully understood the importance of it. Um, uh, I've 
died to sin with Christ and been raised to new spiritual life in him. I believe baptism is a symbol of that. I would also like to join this local assembly at Timberlake Baptist uh, because I believe it is biblically sound and I want to get more involved in local church. Um, Nathan, I'm going to baptize you based upon your profession of faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in your life. Good evening. My name is Julia Duvall. I grew up in a Christian home and became, became a Christian at a young age. I could see my sinfulness in that I was a very strong-willed as a child and wanted my way rather than what my parents told me to do, and that resulted in me disobeying them multiple times each day. One day my mother asked me if I wanted to be a, become a Christian, and I said yes. We read through a little tract that explained the gospel. I knew I was a sinner, and I prayed and trusted Jesus that day to forgive my sins. I saved that little tract and still have it to this day. My parents taught us the word of God, and I saw a progressive change in my life, though it was slow at times. We always did family devotions and prayer time together as I was growing up, and the members of my family and I also had personal devotion time pretty much every day. As the years went on, I was still very stubborn and strong-willed. Thankfully, the Lord worked in me and sanctified me, and I remember one day in specific, when I was about 11 years old, that God allowed me to see that I was the issue and some of the struggles I was having in my relationships with my family because I was not treating them right. I was selfish and unkind, and that was causing issues. From that day forward, once God opened my eyes to this reality about myself, I made more of an effort to love my siblings and treat them right. But I'm not really sure if it was out of a desire to please God or just because I wanted to be a nice person and for my siblings to like me. Throughout my life, I probably would have always said I wanted to please and obey God, but I did not necessarily live that out practically. As I got older, though, the Lord continually sanctified me, and my desires slowly became desires to please Him. I am thankful for his sanctifying work in my life, and I can say that as I progressed through high school and went to college, my faith was deepened very much, and I grew in my relationship with the Lord and wanting to truly please him and not just be a good person. Throughout high school and on, I have slowly taken my faith more and more seriously so that it is now first and foremost in my life. I have learned to trust God greatly in so many areas of life, and he still continues to sanctify me every day. I am thankful for Timberlake Baptist and the faithful teaching we received, and I have learned so much from the time I have been here as well. I am so thankful to have really known the Lord to some degree for all of my life, as even before I became a Christian, my parents would speak to my, me and my siblings about God, pray and read the Bible with us, and take us to church every Sunday. Being raised in a Christian home has been a blessing from the Lord that I never want to take for granted. I grew up in a Reformed Presbyterian church, so I was baptized as a child. I have been studying baptism and the difference between infant baptism and believer's baptism for a few years now and I'm being baptized as a believer today as an outward sign of the transformation that took place inside of me when I was saved. I'm extremely grateful for my family and the church I was raised in, and am in no way meaning any disrespect towards any of them. I'm thankful for how the Lord has used my family and that church to grow my relationship with him and for everything I've learned. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be baptized as a believer and to share my testimony with you all today. Thank you. Based upon your profession of faith, my sister, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. My name is Kaylin Fills, and this is my testimony of the unfathomable mercies of God. I did not grow up in a Christ-centered home or around many people who lived out the Word of God. However, I visited many churches with family, friends, and had many opportunities to take heed to the gospel. I even participated in different ministries in these churches. Before Christ, I lived a life of multiplicity. Everyone knew a different version of myself that was fabricated to look blameless. I learned to say and do the right things to get the affection I craved while living in hidden sin. I, as a teenager, I began to search for outlets for anxiety, and in 2020, I went to a worship night at a church and was given the opportunity to talk and pray with someone. 
I was even baptized at this church a few months later. However, that was an overly emotionally driven response to the environment, and my heart did not truly change. For years after that, everything was an act. There were no fruits of the Spirit in my life. If anything, I spiraled down sinful patterns in my life that I never expected to end up in. In the fall of 2023, I began to come to Timberlake consistently and grow in my knowledge of Scripture. My soul was desperate for Christ, but I was getting in my own way because of my lack of willingness to be vulnerable and honest. The weight of my sin in my life was heavy beyond measure, and I was still prideful, thinking that I could make things better in my way and my timing. I spiraled to a point of such knowledge of my depravity and sorrow over my sinful nature that I deceived myself and told myself there was no way to be free from the burden of sin and darkness in this life. However, God is good, merciful, and forgiving. The wisdom that I'd been gaining through the church and faithful friends and leaders overpowered my sinful and selfish desires. At the end of the semester, I realized that I had no hope but Christ. I was like David in Psalm 32, 3 through 5, when he says, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, and my strength was sapped as in the, heart of, in, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess, confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I wept over my sins and confessed them to God and the people around me. God was immensely faithful and gracious to me and my repentance. There are no words that can express how much gratitude I have for Christ, who took the wrath that I deserve. It is only by the grace of God that I have realized that in my sin and without Christ, I was living under judgment and powerless to overcome the multitude of sins in my life and separated from the presence of God. By God's mercy, I wholeheartedly believe in Jesus Christ to receive the gift of eternal life and forgiveness for my sins. I have learned that it is only through Christ that I can increase in humility, honesty, gratitude, and the fruit of the Spirit. I want to be baptized to demonstrate that I have repudiated my old life of deceit and chosen to identify with Christ. I want to become a member of Timberlake, because of the Christ-centered teaching and shepherding that I've experienced these past few months, I rejoice in the Lord and praise Him for my continued growth and for His grace and mercy to allow me to stand in front of so many witnesses to proclaim His goodness. Caitlin, based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. Hi, my name is Lizzie Montgomery. Uh, I was raised in a Christian home, but I spent many years unsure about the status of my salvation after I had prayed to be forgiven at the age of seven. I had a lot of doubts about God and the truth of scripture, but I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone. I was a well-behaved kid who always had the answers in Sunday school, but I was constantly trying to convince myself that God was real. In middle school and the beginning of high school, the anxiety I felt about my unsure faith leaked into every area of my life. I was constantly trying to please people and give my life purpose through academics and sports, but my imperfection left me frustrated. My only consistent prayer was, Lord, please take away this unbelief. At the end of high school, God used faithful believers to model to me the joy found in relying on Christ, and I recognized that only he could satisfy the truest desires of my heart and heal my sin and disbelief. While I can't point to a moment that everything changed, he patiently revealed his faithfulness and presence to me through time in his word, prayer, and living in community. The Lord again showed his providential hand in leading me to a university where I grew in my understanding of spiritual disciplines, service, and the Lord-established institution of the church. Today I stand here assured that Christ has cleansed me of my sins through his death and secured eternal life through his resurrection. 
I am now being baptized as a sign of the new life that I have in Christ, as well as a public declaration of my faith. I am excited to join Timberlake Baptist Church to commit to engaging with the local body, and I look forward to the service opportunities membership will afford. I am eager to listen to the wisdom you all have gained through your journeys with the Lord. Lizzie, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. Hello. I'm Brooke. Rejection, failure, anger, loss heartbreak, and unworthy are some of the main words and emotions that come to mind when I think back to my early adulthood. My early adulthood was the time in my life when I thought I had everything figured out. I was trying to write my own story on my own terms. Little by little, my life kept unraveling piece by piece. I had grown angry with God because everything that kept happening was not in my plan. It was not how I had written my story, and it began changing who I was as a person. Oh, bear with me. Repetitive loss and heartbreak made me empty, and I had no longer knew the person staring back at me. After years of trying to find myself again, I kept feeling the emptiness was something more. Deep down in my soul, I knew that ultimately the life that I wanted was one with a godly husband, a man that would go to church with me on Sunday mornings and to raise our children to love the Lord. I, don't know how to, I didn't know how to find it. Everything I had been through in the previous years made me feel unworthy of a love like that. I met Taylor, my husband, in 2015, and he was just that. The one thing that made me fall in love with him was the love that he had for God and that he wasn't afraid to show it. In that moment, I could see the life that I had wanted so badly playing out in my mind. Taylor and I searched for a year or so for a church that we could call home, one that we felt like we belonged to. Nothing seemed to feel right until Bethany Henry contacted me and invited me to the women's conference here at TBC. Even though I had agreed to go, I was hesitant to because my father had just unexpectedly passed away and I wasn't feeling up to being around people. Little did I know in this moment God was starting to work within me. Bethany was a saving grace to me whether she knows it or not. Shortly after, we were invited to a small group function at the Henry's and then to church. We've not looked back since. Through this church and through our small group, through counseling with Mark and Cindy, I have learned the gospel. It didn't come easy to me. Mark Hager told us in counseling one night to go home and pray the prayer for forgiveness, and instead I left angry and crying. I couldn't understand why he made it seem so easy. I called Vivian and cried in frustration. I realized after talking through everything with Viv that it wasn't, that it wasn't easy for me. I just still didn't feel worthy of his forgiveness, that it wasn't going to work for me. We continued counseling, and I continued to learn more and more. Finally, everything just clicked. I left one night, cried again, and asked the Lord to forgive me of all of my sins. Since that night in my car, I have felt free, truly knowing that Jesus has died for me, for my sins both past and present, and that I have an eternal home with him in heaven, is the most humbling moments in my life, knowing that I no longer have to carry the burdens and the pain of my past, and handling and handing everything over to the Lord, being granted grace and eternity, makes me strive to live every day in a way that pleases him. I can only hope that moving forward in this new life, that I can be a blessing and a spiritual encouragement to others the way that those in this church have been to myself and my family. I hope and pray that I can continue to learn as much as possible and that others will see Christ in me and my actions the same way that I have within our small group, our Sunday school class, and the members of this church. I'm going to baptize you, my sister, based upon your profession of faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. Uh, 
I'm husband. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm Taylor Dunn. On August 2nd, 2011, I had to make two phone calls to my mother and sister and tell them to come home. I had found my father dead from a drug overdose. God chose me. Following my father's death, I began to realize and appreciate why he chose me for that. Ever since that day, I declared I would choose him. <clears throat> I was baptized several months after I turned 18 and shortly after graduating high school. At that time, without truly understanding the gospel, I thought I had been saved but was only fulfilling a wish my maternal grandparents had. I was 22 years old when I found my father. In the years to follow, I wanted to know Jesus Christ. Over the next 15 years or so, I finally realized I had not chosen him, not every day. I chose sin. I chose the world. I was guilty. A little over one year ago, my wife, Brooke, and I, along with our kids, began visiting Timberlake Baptist Church through some long-term long -term friends. Looking back now, through their own faith and God's will, Mark and Bethany Henry changed our lives. Our daughter had already started attending TCS. The Henrys invited us to several gatherings, which led to family life visits, and you can see where this is going. That led us to small groups, which is when God showed us TBC <clears throat> was where he wanted us. A few months ago, Brooke and I began meeting with Mark Sr. and Cindy. It turned out to be nothing I could ever, ever have ever expected. Senior taught us the gospel to its core. We were being taught who Jesus Christ truly was. About halfway through, Mark began talking to us about praying the prayer, the prayer for God to save us, for him to grant us his mercy, for us to repent. I prayed for 18 of the 20 minutes home to Bedford. I had longed for that moment. Several weeks ago, he had asked us to write down what the gospel meant to us. The following is what I wrote. It is the understanding and recognition that I should have been the one hanging on the cross. I was not worthy of a love that deep, to be nothing and earn something so everlasting, accepting that my repentance was not my choice alone, yet the Holy Spirit's conviction in me, understanding that I have no control over my life. My life is dependent entirely on God's will for my life, and my only responsibility is to have faith in his will. Through faith in him, I may receive his grace for salvation, asking God for his mercy over my sins and dying to self. I have, I have life in Jesus Christ because of what he did, nothing I have done. He secured my victory on the cross. I never want to live for the sinful world again. He knows me. I seek him so that I can lead Brooke, Avi, and Palmer. <clears throat> I finally realized he had not moved. I had. All I want is Jesus. Because of this testimony, I would like to be baptized and be a part of the TPC family. Based on your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in new life. All right, we have one more. Hi, my name is Trey Schnarr. Many of you, sorry, many of you have known me my whole life since I grew up here at Timberlake. I'm thankful for my parents and grandparents who taught me the word and always encouraged me to know Christ and make my faith my own. When I was six, I made a profession of faith and I was baptized soon after. I realize now after looking back over my life that I didn't fully understand my need for Christ and the depraved state of my heart. Although I looked like a pretty good kid on the outside, my heart told a different story. I developed sinful habits that grew to enslave me. I served myself and my sinful desires all while going to church each Sunday, believing I was a Christian. When I was older, I felt convicted to confess this in, in my heart. I recognized that I was completely helpless on my own to battle the sin that enslaved me. I confessed my sin to God and turned to him for the forgiveness he freely offered. By his work on the cross, through his death and resurrection, I was granted that forgiveness and was united with him. He has given me such a freedom and openness that I have never experienced before. Since then, I've had a desire to honor him and reject the sinful desire to serve myself. I also felt convicted to confess my sin to others, to both 
to both seek forgiveness from those who I'd sinned against and to get help in putting it to death. I started having a desire for the word, to pray, and to grow in my knowledge of Christ. I can see how God was slowly sanctifying me over time. He used so many different means of grace to sanctify me. My wife, who relentlessly points me to Christ, my parents and grandparents who have prayed for me my whole life, and those who have discipled me in teaching me how to repent fully and how to put sin to death strategically. I am so thankful that all along God has chosen me and knew me fully. He had always been working in my life to bring about more glory to himself and good to me. I want to be baptized to proclaim outwardly the death I have experienced to my old self and the new life which I live in Christ, because I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Trey, my little brother, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, baptized in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. 